Thank you for joining me for Wednesday Wisdom. This is a weekly devotion where we follow the F260 Bible reading plan. This is week 22 of our study, and we're going to be looking at the book of Jonah. Now, Jonah is one of my favorite books of the Bible because it, there's so many themes that we find throughout the rest of Scripture. We see the power of God's Word. We see um, the reluctance of Jonah the prophet. Um, but we also see God granting faith and repentance to um, a pagan nation. And so we just see His grace there. Now, Jonah starts off, and the word of the Lord comes to Jonah. In verse 2, he says, Get up and go to that great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because their evil has come up before me. And then what does Jonah do? Well, he tries to flee from the presence of the Lord. He tries to flee to, to Tarshish. And so he gets on a boat, and he goes off, and you know the rest. He's swallowed by a great fish or a great whale. There's a storm, and they end up throwing off Jonah because he knows that it's him who uh, he who's disobeying the Lord. And the um, Lord appoints a fish to, to, ha- to, to, to swallow him, and he spits him back up. And um, after Jonah pay, prays for um, you know, forgiveness down in the depths of the ocean. Well, Jonah then follows um, the Lord's command, and he goes to this awful nation. I mean, they just were what we would consider as as haters of God, and we see him preaching the word. He says in chapter 3, this the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Get up and go to that great city of Nineveh and preach the message that I tell you. And Jonah got up and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's command. Now, Nineveh was an extremely great city, a three-day walk. And Jonah set out on the first day of his walk in the city and proclaimed, In forty days, Nineveh will be demolished. It's going to be destroyed. And so he preaches this message of judgment. But you know what's so incredible? All he preaches is this message of judgment. There's really no assurance of hope, but God's word is so powerful that it pierces their hearts and it leads them to repentance. They um, they have a fast. They they tear their clothes, even sackcloth and, and ashes, and and it makes its way up even to the king. And there's this uh, amazing mourning and repentance that comes over their sins. And they say, "Who knows? Maybe the Lord will forgive us." And He certainly does. Now we end up seeing the actual character of Jonah in chapter 4 and when this amazing sign of repentance all across the, 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 the city happens. It says, Jonah was greatly displeased and became furious. And he prayed to the Lord, Please, Lord, isn't this what I said while I was still in my own country? That's why I fled to Tarshish in the first place. I knew that you were a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast and faithful love and one who relents from sending disaster. And this is actually a quotation from Exodus when God reveals himself to Moses, revealing his character to him. But see, Jonah, he was afraid. He wasn't afraid of the people. He was, in some ways, afraid of God. He was afraid of God's word because he knew how powerful that it was. He knew God's word was powerful. So we must think about that. You know, when God calls us to to go and tell people to repent and to to believe, we often think nothing would happen, but man, we should have the confidence that it would. Jonah wasn't afraid that the people wouldn't repent, that God wouldn't work. He just hated them. He he thought that God should only be the God of Israel and that he was better than these other people. On this past Sunday, um, as we were looking um, at the the parables in Luke chapter 15, we see Jesus, he's talking to the Pharisees, right? And, and he was telling them that you've been bad shepherds. You didn't go out and find the lost sheep. You weren't like this woman. You didn't seek the coin. And, and you were like this, this younger brother who, who didn't go after his older brother. But see, see, Jesus, he's actually the good shepherd, and, and he's the, the antitype in a sense. He's the one who fulfills all these things. He's the one who actually does go and seek and save the lost, but see, Jonah was not like that. Jonah, Jonah didn't have love in his heart and compassion. And so we must ask ourselves, are we going to be like Jonah? Are we going to say, you know what? Somebody else will share the gospel with our coworkers, with our friends, or with our family. Are we going to be like the Pharisees and say, no, we don't need that faith and repentance, and we don't need to share that with anyone else? Are we, or are we going to be like Jesus? Are we going to be like him and, and actually seek and save that which was lost? Share his, his love with others. Share the good news with others because we need repentance. And we see that here God's word brings us to repentance, but so do others. You know, you must ask yourself when you see how powerful God's word is here. Do you trust the word of God or do you live like a, a practical atheist? Do you ignore it? Now, you say you believe it, but you haven't really applied it to your life, and you're living as if there was no God. 
Do you believe God's word is powerful? Do you believe when you share it that God is working, even if you don't see it, that you know God is working? And then have you too been brought to repentance? Is there other areas of your life where you need to turn from and turn to the Lord? Because we know that God's word, he he will do that. And he is slow to anger. He is gracious and he will receive us when we come to him. Well, I hope you enjoyed this devotion and I will see you next week for our Wednesday wisdom devotion. Have a blessed week.